Hi, I'm Dan Taylor, Principal PM Manager for our Python Developer Tools here at Microsoft. Today, the Visual Studio Code team is announcing Visual Studio Code Remote, which allows Visual Studio Code to run in remote workspaces, in Docker environments, Windows subsystem for Linux, or over an SSH connection. The way this works is that Visual Studio Code's UI runs on your local machine and then connects to a remote server which hosts your extensions. This means that all of the capabilities that you would be able to use in your local environment, such as debugging, your terminal, source control, they all work against the remote workspace. Now, I've been playing with this new capability, and I'd like to take you through a tour of how it works. Let's dive right in. I've published this sample Twitter application to GitHub, which is a Django, React, and Postgres application that we're going to open in a Dockerized development environment using Visual Studio Code Remote. I've cloned this app and opened it up with Visual Studio Code Insiders, and we can see our Docker development environment is defined by this devcontainer.json file, which points at a Docker Compose file that'll define the services in our development environment. You can see we've got an application service. This will contain our Python and Node runtime, as well as a database container that uses Postgres. To open up this development environment, we can click Open a Remote Window in the bottom left-hand corner and select the Reopen Folder and Container command. Visual Studio Code will then reload and then start building the Docker containers defined by the Docker Compose files. It will then start up a Visual Studio Code remote server, which will host our extensions and allows us to work remotely inside of this Docker container environment. I can create a new terminal, which will then run inside of the Docker container, and I can start building my Node.js front end by running npm run dev. I can also set breakpoints and start debugging. If I click in the debug activity bar and click play. That will start up the debugger and it'll launch your app on port 8000. Port 8000 is mapped out to our local machine so I can then open up my browser and then view this application in my browser. And then I can see I'm also stopped in the breakpoint and I can inspect variables and do everything that would work locally. So I can type request and get completions here and look at request.user and expand that variable uh, in the debug console. Um, I can do full debugging here inside of the container. I can also use IntelliSense. For example, if I open up my models file and start typing, I get my IntelliCode auto completions because I've got the IntelliCode extension installed, showing me the top five recommendations from this giant completion list. I can open my, up my test file and then I can run unit tests here inside of the container. I can see here that uh, my tests had passed. Now let's take a quick look at how Visual Studio Code Remote enables us to work in Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL for short. To get started with WSL, I can type WSL for my Windows command prompt. And now I'm running inside of a bash command prompt that's running on top of a Linux image on top of the Windows kernel. Now I can go to my dev folder where I've got a sample application that I want to work with. And to get started with this, I can simply type code insiders dot from the command prompt, and that will launch Visual Studio Code Remote running inside of the WSL system. It will then start the VS Code Remote server and then connect the UI on my desktop to that server so I can start developing as if I was developing on my local desktop machine. I can open up files, I can hover over variables, and then I can even start debugging. So debug, start debugging, I'll select the current file, and it'll run this script. This script downloads and analyzes data from Stack Overflow surveys over the past few years. So I've set a breakpoint here and we can step through uh, each year of analysis. So if I run one iteration of the loop, we download the 2011 survey, and I can look at the totals that are in um, for that year, and I can see the, the values of the various languages over time. And I can just keep running and running through this. Now let's dive into using Visual Studio Code Remote to develop on a remote virtual machine over an SSH connection. Here I've got this deep learning VM running in Azure, it's running on a Linux operating system. It has six cores and 56 gigs of RAM, as well as a GPU. To develop against this, we'll open the remote SSH activity bar, and then we will uh, configure our connections. And I've already got this deep learning VM set up here with just the host name and my username. 
Uh, and I've got my SSH public private key set up here. So I can just click the connect to host button and a new instance of Visual Studio Code will open that will be running remotely inside of that VM. Once this opens, I can then open a folder on the remote system. Uh, this VM actually comes with a bunch of pre-made notebooks in this notebooks folder. So we're gonna click okay and open that as our workspace. And then let's take a look at some of the notebooks that are available. I'm going to open up this fully connected uh, IPyNB notebook and I'm going to import Jupyter Notebook, which will then load the Python extension running on the virtual machine. It's uh, using a, a Conda environment as indicated by the Conda name in the status bar there. And then I can just run uh, all of the cells here in order to use the Python interactive window and uh, see the interactive output as I train uh, the machine learning model. You can see it's, uh, it's training uh, the initial set of steps there. And then finally, we see it trained to about 85% accuracy. Now we can open up our terminal, which is running on the remote machine. And then we can type NVIDIA SMI to see uh, that we were using about 12 gigs of GPU memory during that training process. That was a quick tour of Visual Studio Code Remote, and I'm excited for the new capabilities that this unlocks for Visual Studio Code developers and Python developers in particular. Be sure to try it out today by visiting aka.ms slash vscode remote. Thank you for watching.